Hi, my name is Samor Rodriguez and this is Samor Rodriguez Survival. Welcome to my channel. I'm back in Northern Indiana again. I've been wanting to build a smoker ever since doing the elk. I've been wanting to do some elk sausage, elk summer sausage. I sometimes hunt deer venison as well, so I wanted to do a smoker. The guys at Vivor sent me a chainsaw mill for me to test it. And I decided to give it a go and do a trial on it. There are some good companies that do these chainsaw mills like Granberg, Logosol. This guy sent me this one, so I decided to test it and try it. So I got myself a, a bar for the job and a ripping chain. Rip cuts take a little more uh, hump than, than cross cuts. So I got a, a ripping chain and a bar for my saw. From the guys at Granberg, yeah. A ripping chain. The down in this other box that is disintegrating into. This one has all the chainsaw mill and stuff. So this is a whole system, it's a ladder for you. Uh oh, the instructions got wet. It's a lot of nuts and bolts in here. Well, it feels pretty solid. Pretty good with this and didn't take too much effort. You lose a few inches in the front and there for the pocket to go in there into the safety cage there. And you lose a little bit in the back, so you only get this much. Uh, there is a lot of poplar here, a bunch of poplar in these woods. So we'll go look for one that's been down the right size and go from there. Okay, check the tension on your chain. We'll try that and see how it feels. Let's try it. Around, around there might be okay. Okay, and now we'll make sure that everything is running. Looks good. I'm supposed to be able to slice wood and make my own lumber with this thing, so let's go test it. So there's a down tree. It's right on the trail. It's off the ground. Solid. Really solid. Yeah, that's a lot of board feet. Okay, for those cats, I can probably just use it. Um, I can probably just use the small saw. So I'll take this guy over there. That'll be enough for this side too. <laughs> Let's start this project, right? Some people clean them up of all the bark. Okay, 
it's pretty awesome let me show you this is the first one look how beautiful that wood looks It's gonna be a beautiful smoker. I can't believe I actually did this. A bunch of boards. Now I have plenty for the smoker. Okay, let's turn it off for the day. Go rest. Uh, I'm going to think about the design, the plans, work on the sausage, and then come back and put it together, smoke my first uh, elk sausage in there. Pretty cool. See you guys when we get back at it. Now we're going to make some pepperoni sticks with some of the leftover elk I have. And a couple of ingredients from the garden. These are garlic scapes. We always like to plant garlic in our garden and uh, it's a beautiful process because we plant it in the fall, then in winter it's just underground and there are a bunch of leaves that we put on it. And now in the spring and summer they come out. And a couple of weeks ago we harvested the, um, the garlic scapes, like the flowers, before they turn into flower. And we thought that would be a good addition to the elk pepperonis that we want to make. So, this is the elk. The beautiful meat is still a bit frozen. But you have to... I went to YouTube University and I watched a couple guys that are professionals at this and they say you have to work it really cold. And I have some pepperoni casings. Uh, and even though I am adding a little bit of stuff from the garden, I'm still using a try and true recipe because it's my first time doing the pepperoni sticks, so I don't want to mess it up. But I'm pretty sure I will like this process because I like pepperoni sticks and I will uh, start creating my own recipe. Like if you don't want to add nitrates, to your process. I know some people use like celery juice instead. I would like to make my own, because uh, I make my own maple syrup, but I would like to make my own maple sugar and do my own cures that way. So it's just the beginning of the process, the beginning of my um, my journey in making uh, small preserved meats like that. So it's a good start with the elk, so we'll get going. We'll Cut it up, put it through the grinder a couple times, and then we'll start adding the ingredients. Got the other chunks of it to make the right amount. And since the elk is really lean meat, I'm using five pounds of really fatty pork, pork belly. So this I will 
in cubes. because it's such a lean meat I'm gonna add a bunch of this pork belly high in fat it's like bacon and candy so yeah let's add a bunch of this too Okay, <laughs> back at the kitchen again. Yesterday night, it was pretty loud and it was really late and I didn't want to bother my mom because she just got back from El Salvador. But it's a little earlier today, so I'm gonna just keep going. Get the, the meat, the pork, and the elk. So yeah, I'm just gonna turn this thing on, grind it. Okay, the thing is on, container, meat, I think I'm ready finally, let's try it. loud. I'm glad it's edited and you don't get to hear all that loud noise in there. <laughs> it's pretty loud but it's been a good piece of equipment for the kitchen. I bought it a long time ago and it's been helping a bunch. I'm gonna put it all in this container, get that one free so I can keep grinding into it. see the difference this disc of plate is uh, this is number 12 4.5 millimeters it's a big difference on the holes this one the first one I used let's find it number 12 seven millimeters cool okay Start our second grind, I guess. Okay. We got through the second grind. You can tell it's a bit finer, so now it's time to use your hands. Some people do it on their grind it as well, put all the spices in it. But basically now it's time to start mixing the um, the curing the curing that you're going to use and the spices and try to get all the protein to become really sticky. So let's try it. Let's Let's try to get it all mixed up by hand. I'm probably going to do it in this big bowl. Okay, I have the proper ratios of fat to lean elk meat. I'm going to add the garlic scapes I showed you. These are from, from the garden. I think it's gonna add a good Good flavor to the mix. The cure. Okay. 
We gotta mix it really well. Two cups of water. Start mixing this. Okay, I've been mixing for like 10 minutes and uh, it's really tacky uh, and that's what we want. So I think I'm ready to start stuffing the, the pepperoni casings. You can use animal guts. You can use all the commercial casings they sell, different kinds. Yeah. I think this is ready to go. You can see the green of the garlic scape, so it looks really good. I think it got mixed up really well, and it's gonna get mixed up again by getting into the stuffing casings. Uh, casings. So, Almost done with this part of the process. Goes into that, and I'm gonna hold them. And then me goes in here again. Okay, let's try this. good so now I'm going to change it to the fatter sticks and we're going to use the cellulose casings to make bigger pepperoni for for uh, for pizza okay for this process we also have to use some hog rings to close it up so back at the milling yard so let's get this uh, wood to a better spot so it can dry straight I have a better spot that I can use out there is a slab of uh, concrete that's been sitting there I cleaned a couple old metal roofing that was in there a couple nice snakes came over came out of it but now I have all this wood that I want to transfer there Pretty cool in here. There are some differences in the size, but once I get into it, they are pretty, uh, they're pretty even. But right now, they are not set up properly. I want to give them uh, the best chance possible to to dry straight. Okay, start to moving the wood over here. 
I put, uh, I got the stickers. Put them every so often. So it gets, so it stays supported. And it allows the air and the sunshine to do this magic. And let them dry so they don't get miscellated and we just lose all the work with it. This is more like for long-term storage, for letting them dry, cover them up, maybe one of those tents, um, canvas tents or something, a roofing, uh, even just a tarp, a plastic on top, so they don't get rain on. For now, I'm just gonna move them over here. I'm going to go check the space. I wanna show you this spot that I've been working on. I did an oven out there for the TV show alone, the skills challenge. It was an earthen oven, we did it in four days. Local clay from the creek, sand from the creek, and grasses from that side to mix them all together. And the, it was a really cool project. If you get the chance, go check it out. I'm thinking to build a smoker right next to the oven because I, I can have the wood there when I'm doing pizzas, I can be smoking some meat. I don't know. Let's go check it. I know it looks a little crazy right now, this big structure, but... But there is an oven underneath this tarp. It's raining right now, I have it. I'm supposed to put a roof in here. This is work in progress. Because the oven is here anyways. Once it stops raining, I'll show you underneath what it looks like. It's a pretty cool earthen oven, pizza oven. So now I have a thick slab. That's two and a half. It's seven and a half from here to here so I can get three long Two and a half by two and a half pieces. That should be plenty, plenty big to handle a little smoker. And I still have a bunch of that tree left. Okay, we take the first few materials to the construction site. up here and one in here so lots to do oh my god I'm just gonna make a box it's gotta be simple right <laughs> now what do I do Deep enough. I'm going to put a, a the post and I have a bag of concrete I have so it stays put.
thought I lifted the thing. I went right through it. Ah, it's because my little pin is broken. This one. So I cannot lock it in place. Well, I tried to lock it, but this one didn't lock in place. It was the whole thing was running. What a dummy. <laughs> well, I did my cat. I needed that one, so now I can use my table saw. <laughs> I slice it right into. Okay, it'll be hard to follow, but I've been cutting these boards. They're eight by two feet. This is one of the posts that goes on the smoker. I will end up leaving a little space so they have time to dry and extend, expand and I'm going to put another, give them a little space like that. Then put a little board in there. That's the idea anyways. Let me try, I'm trying to rush here before night time just so I can have the structure and try to finish it tomorrow so hustling to try to to do it we'll see Walls starting to take shape, walls are coming up, I think that's a good way to do it because the wood is still, it's not cured, it's been wet, so the little space in there gives it, gives it a chance to expand and contract as it dries, as it changes. I got some materials. <laughs> it's taking, this project is taking longer than I thought. <laughs> Let's go do this. I have one, I need one more for this. One more of the little ones. That for that. But that's the same way I will do this, this side. Just get a piece like that. And the boards then just can put them in this one. Okay, it's been raining all night, all morning. Right now it's 11.14 a.m. But it's time to keep working on this. The weatherman says, that it will probably stop raining soon. Everything is pretty saturated with water, so it doesn't matter, I gotta start, you know? So I'm going to do this wall. Man, this is not square. I don't think my four posts are square, so. But anyways, I think it's gonna work. Let's try to, the, the goal will be to try to finish it today. I hope I can do that. I have to build the base for the fire pit. Okay, here they are, just uh, recycle bricks and cinder blocks. Uh, 
okay i've been thinking about it and i think this design that i've been working on is the one that's going to do it so this brick right here is just the base i put three of them and then i put that one on top this is like uh, going to draw the the smoke away from the fire the fire is gonna be here in front it's just a small fire I will have to come periodically and feed it until I can figure out how to enclose, you know, do it better. You know, they don't use them in construction anymore because they have that chip right there. Okay, it's a little surface here. Put the tinder, the matches. Over here is the firebox, pretty big. Splits into two chambers there. But then it goes back into one chamber on the chimney, but it's got a couple of bricks acting as like a flute, permanent flute thing. And it should help cool down the smoke a little bit or the heat that will definitely light up Okay, I made this side. Now I made this longer because this I made it too short. So I probably will replace this so they look good. And those. put a rod in the center to hang the salamis or whatever I'm doing slowly coming together I feel like I'm building a, a boat or a mansion even though it's just a box to smoke meat I don't like how this is so let's try to fix it Okay, door is ready. I have a couple recycle hinges here. Let's test it. Done with it. Put this 
that is here. Put in final touches, thermometers to make sure I don't undercook or overcook. There it is. And here is a simple latch, a door. Hardware cloth in there to dissipate the smoke a little bit. Oh, animals not coming through and living here. Yeah, we'll see about over there. And now I'm going to add a couple of sticks in here for right now, just to hold stuff in place. Put the thermometer right there. This one and the other one I use it to make to check the internal temperature of the, the stuff. Okay, let's try it in there. That's it. That's it. At least I get an idea of what's going on in there. Okay, I feel good about it. Time to start the fire. Start the fire and, and cook some pepperonis. Really, really awesome. And this two in the front help. So we'll do that. Better. The pepperonis are ready to go, man. I need to bring it up and start hanging them. I want to do a little fire. Over here. But that's perfect. I mean, really awesome 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 proud of it my first smoker no bad and it's working it's actually working man whoa that's awesome This is it. Next year. I think they're doing pretty good. Okay, it's 244. So it's been from 130, now it's been steady at 150. But now I think it's when. Awesome right there. The pan, I can add moisture, water, flavor, flavor water. And look, they're starting to look pretty good. I'm going to raise the temperature very slowly. I think I'm going to keep it at 150 for a while now. It's looking pretty good, so I don't want to rush it. Keep it there for a couple hours. Keep an eye on it. Just making sausage here. <laughs> Just making sausage. It's working. The smoke is coming out. So, um, Oh, 
Okay, they're still smoking. It's a few hour commitment to get them done. The internal temperature needs to be just right so you don't get people sick. <laughs> and you don't overcook them. But everything is working well. We're getting close, another 10 degrees. Up there, this one down here is probably way down because it's at the bottom, you're just getting the heat right there. Okay, the thermometer says these little ones are done. This one on the bottom is overdone, but all the small sticks are done now. Uh, the small ones are done, so I'm going to take them down and uh, put them in this container. And then we'll go a little longer for the for the big ones, for the pizza ones. Yum. Yum. <laughs> oh man. Perfection. That's pretty good. Mmm. I can't believe I'm buying this. I can use Make him now. Really good. Really, really good. But look at buckets of pepperoni. <laughs> Got more in here. Buckets of pepperoni for the school year. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I got the little ones out. Now it's just the big boys. They still need a couple more hours. But they're, they're on their way. Almost there. Okay, these are done. <laughs> Time to close the sausage shop and head home. Daughter's first day of kindergarten is tomorrow, so I gotta go do the ritual, send her off, and she can take some good pepperoni snacks for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, thank you guys again. It's been awesome again to do these skills and all this survival advice. It might not seem like it, but it is, man. Preserving food is huge. Try to dip your toes into it preserving fish any game you have or you can get or start getting into game i don't know just <laughs> try to preserve food it's really important thank you guys see you at next one if you enjoy this content and support videos like this check out my patreon here and my latest video here subscribe here this content is brought to you by Fowler's Making Mischief Studios. You can check them out here.